Hello, good afternoon. My name's Mark Wilcox. Uh, I'm a medical microbiologist um, from Leeds. And uh, medical microbiologists, one of their key roles is to prevent the spread of uh, bugs, bacteria and viruses in particular. Um, and that's the basis um, on which I'm going to talk about today um, in this, um, what I've entitled, um, hand-drying dilemma. And I've just got a simple question um, for you, which I'm hopefully going to answer and, and convince you of the answer. Does it make infection prevention sense to blow hands dry? And, and I think, put simply, the dilemma here is uh, one of um, facilities convenience. And, and I get the arguments about the convenience factors here. I, I, I'm well aware of what they are. But the, um, the telling uh, cost of convenience here is potentially infection risk. Can I just at the outset say that I'm, I'm going to present um, some uh, headline data about a number of studies uh, I designed these studies uh, either myself and or my team um, on our own. Um, yes, the projects were funded by the European Tissue Symposium uh, and, and, and that organisation clearly has a vested interest in uh, tissue paper products um, and I've received funding uh, from them, um, but they have not um, influenced um, the design and execution of the studies that I'm going to refer to. Um, some of you will remember the, this, this uh, poster, public health poster, uh, which dates from uh, swine flu, um, uh, but is relevant to all flu, um, influenza virus situations, and I would argue all respiratory virus situations and the point here and the catchphrase you can see bottom left catch it bin it kill it and you can see here um the uh the droplets uh, imagine there's a bright light shining through a sunlight shining through a window and you, you would be able to see if you get the light right the droplets that are emitted from someone's mouth and nose when they cough or sneeze. And if you remember the, the coughing uh, fit that Theresa May had at uh, a Tory party conference, uh, but when you cough, you emit particles um, at about 60 miles per hour. When you sneeze, the speed goes up, the jet flies at 400 miles per hour, even faster. You say, well, well why? What, 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 am I, what am I introducing, the, uh, the, the, the ludicrous comparison with the jets? Well, jet air dryers, and you can see a particular picture um, uh, to illustrate um, particles and liquid emitted from a jet air dryer on the right, bottom right, that emits air at 400 miles per hour. So four times higher than a sneeze, and um, uh, more than six times higher than a cough. A, a, a number of studies here that, that there are, um, the, these were the initial four, and there's, there's one or two more that I'm going to refer to. Um, but uh, the reason for showing you this slide is just to illustrate, this is a program of work that's built up um, over, I mean, effectively a decade now, almost a decade. Um, and we started off by counting, simply counting uh, the, uh, the, the numbers of droplets emitted um, by a jet air dryer versus a warm air dryer versus someone using paper towels when uh, they um, dried their hands. Um, and we counted these droplets because uh, in different ways, but a simple way was to uh, dip the hands into black watercolour um, paint uh, and then um, you know, shake off the excess as you would in a sink before you go to dry them and then counting the numbers of droplets. And you can see the relative numbers of droplets that are 
splattered, sprayed off the hands during the actual drying process. So 27 fold increase uh, number of droplets with the jet air dryer compared with um, paper towels and, and, and warm air dryers somewhere in between. Um, and if you then count the numbers of droplets hitting the trunk, face, trunk, uh, eyes of, 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 a, of a person, um, you can see the ratio of droplets splattered, and I use that word on purpose, uh, splattered onto the body um, is even greater for, uh, from a uh, jet air dryer compared with uh, towels, with again, warm air dryer somewhere in between. Uh, and we also measured, and I'll show you the numbers here, um, but the splattering on someone stood waiting their turn behind the, the person using the jet air dryer or the warm air dryer or the, uh, the paper towel dispenser. And they got spattered as well, but to a lesser extent. Visually, here you can see the splattering of the black paint onto the white background um, from the um, uh, well-known jet air dryer. And if you measure those visible droplets, just the visible ones, these are the, the tiny droplets that remain ex remain suspended in the air, potentially for minutes, many minutes, possibly hours. These are the big droplets that you can feel that splatter onto you um, uh, and you feel more of them depending on um, whether they're hitting your face, whether you've got a t-shirt on, your arms are exposed, etc, etc. So over a meter to the sides of a jet air dryer, up to about a meter um, to the uh, uh, be beneath the dryer, three quarters of a meter above the dryer, and then you can see that the red lines are um, coming out in front of you as well, at, at least a meter. We could see those visible um, particles, visible droplets, much less droplet dispersal from a paper towel, um, paper towels uh, during hand drying. Um, and we went on to look, they're, they're laboratory effectively based experiments. We went on to measure real contamination, the differences in washrooms that were using either paper towels or were using um, jet air dryers. And we did this in three different washrooms, one in the UK, one in France uh, and one in, um, in Italy. And, and we basically switched the system, the hand drying system that the, um, uh, were being used in one of two washrooms. The two washrooms in each of those three uh, countries uh, and they switched backwards and forwards between paper towel and jet air dryers. You can see the time periods uh, beneath. And then we simply measured the extent of contamination uh, from various surfaces um, and we looked in particular because these washrooms were in hospitals we looked for particular bacteria of interest. Lots of words, lots of numbers on here but essentially concentrate on the, the red letters, the red words, so two sorts of staph aureus, MSSA and MRSA and you'll have heard of Certainly of MRSA and MSSA is just the antibiotic susceptible version of MRSA. More of them are recovered on from surfaces in the washrooms during the periods when jet air dryers were used because of greater splattering. The same was true for enterococci and um, uh, gram negative bacteria that produce enzymes that can break certain antibiotics down, so-called ESBL producing bacteria. Both of those, where do they come from? Essentially from the gut, from feces. So you can imagine how they are being more liberally spread in uh, washrooms using a jet air dryer versus washrooms using paper towels. And they were, they were, those were all significant differences. Um, pictures tell a thousand words, the squares, the orange squares here, show the counts of total counts of bacteria recovered from a, a, um, a raft of environmental surfaces in the washrooms using um, uh, jet air dryer 
orange squares, when the paper towels are being used, much lower counts, blue diamonds. That the top left, UK, France, um, same pattern, Italy, same pattern. So these are, for me, a very telling results that independently measured in different settings, the similarity being hospitals only, um, we, were, we were getting the same stark differences in the amount of environmental contamination due to splatter. Hand drying was carried out by one method versus another. So for me, it's clear which hand drying methods are associated with increased risk of contamination. But does that contamination only matter in the washroom, the toilet setting, or does it matter beyond the washroom? Well, we went on to do another study. Um, these numbers, the, the altrametric, altrametric score 260 on the um, left-hand side is a measure of the level of interest that this study generated. This was a high level of interest. And basically, we watched what happened to somebody use, uh, following hand drying uh, by a jet air dryer versus hand drying from using paper towels, having purposely uh, allowed the potential for contamination to occur. We looked, we looked what happened to those uh, bugs outside of the washroom when the person left the washroom. And we, we basically used a harmless virus called a bacteriophage, um, and we, we, which we could pick up on the person following the splattering and then perhaps being transferred during the journey that, that that person took after they left the washroom. Basically, we found, uh, similarly to the results I've shown before, more contamination um, in the washroom setting, um, uh, more contamination on the body clothing of the individual following jet air dryer uh, versus paper towel use. Uh, and th this is quite interesting, I think, these data. You can see the difference in contamination, red jet air dryer, green um, paper towel use, and uh, on the plastic apron that the person was wearing during their hands drying. Uh, then on the stethoscope that dangled around the neck in true medic fashion onto the, paper, onto the apron and became contaminated, we asked people to cross their arms and then to put those arms, uncross them, on the arms of a chair on which they were sat on to illustrate the transfer of the, of the bugs that were splattered onto them, the transfer onto A, a stethoscope, and then B, the chair, the arm chair, the arms of a chair. And we went one stage further with a pandemic to thank so to speak, um, part way through. And basically, we got people to dry their hands, jet air dryer versus paper towels, but this time, whilst wearing a, a medical, standard medical surgical mask, the ones that you'll be off. Um, and we did this for the individual wearing, uh, drying their hands. We also had an individual stood a meter behind them waiting to dry their hands, waiting their turn. Um, and what we did was we then sampled the masks every five minutes, uh, five, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes after hand drying. And we sampled the surface of the mask, and then we also sampled in the depth of the mask. And that's because we were looking for splattering onto the surface of the mask and inhalation that would have occurred had the mask not been there, the inhalation dragging the particles, the bugs, into the depths of the mask. And uh, again, red bars, jet air, dryer level of, contam of, of contamination splattering onto the surface, green paper towel associated splattering, five to tenfold higher levels of splattering onto the mask. Um, associated with jet air use. Um, and then we broke that 
those periods down into the five minute sections for both the person drying their hands and for the person waiting their turn. The red bars are always higher than the green bars, often significantly so. Why is this important? Well, basically, this is trying to mimic the risk of inhaling a virus, because again, the bug we were studying here was a virus, a harmless virus, but it could equally have been a har potentially harmful virus. So, back to the poster. Catch it, bin it, kill it. Got a confession to make that, that this, um, uh, when I saw this poster and thought about this talk, when I, when I first gave a, a similar talk to this, um, I saw the poster in a washroom, in a toilet. I'm not going to say where it is. It's a blurred picture. You have to take these pictures quite quickly, don't you, when you're in a, in a, in a washroom setting for obvious reasons. Um, and there it is, situated above a jet air dryer. Not very sensible, I, I put it to you. Remember those distances? These are exactly the same distances of splattering that I re re showed you before. Remember, they one and a half, nearly one and a half meters to the sides, a meter or so out towards you or up in the air. Those distances are important for the photographs I show you next. Okay. So if there were two people using these urinals, one each, would you want to be the person using the left-hand urinal or the right-hand urinal? I think you get my drift. And I said the word drift on purpose there. If you were drying your hands at the child sink on the left or the adult sink on the right, Who's at the greatest risk of getting splattering from the hands of the person using the hand dryer on the left hand side? Distances I showed you would argue that both individuals, if there were two individuals stood at one at each sink, were, would be at risk, but one at much higher risk than the other. And then this final photograph, um, I spotted the convenient installation of two hooks in this washroom uh, to hang, hang, hang one's um, articles, in this case, my jacket. If one was drying one's hands um, in that jet air dryer, imagine the degree of splattering and contamination on the jacket hung there. The final thing I'd, I'd just like to say is that um, some, of the manufacturers of these jet air dryers um, go on to talk about um, either UV light um, disinfection um, or in this case HEPA filtration uh, to in an attempt I, I put it to you to reassure about the cleanliness of this approach. Just let's be clear that the HEPA filter in um, such a device is HEPA filtering the air that goes into the device and does absolutely nothing to the air being splattered from the device with the bugs that are on the hands, still on the hands, despite hand washing. And, and again, let's be clear that if any of you, uh, I'm sure people will have seen many times examples of very, very poor hand washing following toilet use in a public washroom. And imagine then you put those hands into a drier situation. That's what we're trying to mimic here. The splattering of the droplets containing the bugs that are left on the hands because our hands are not sterile. They may be clean or cleaner, cleanish, they may still be dirty, but they're not sterile, even after good hand washing. So, does it make infection prevention sense to blow hands dry? I don't believe it does. I don't think there's any doubt about the potential risk here. Um, and remember, the more virus, 
um, circulating, whether it's SARS-CoV-2, the cause of, of COVID-19, or whether it's influenza virus or some other respiratory virus. If you've got an infection that's, um, a, a, and the virus are excreted from your nose and mouth, your hands are almost certainly going to be contaminated by that virus. You then go to the washroom um, and um, uh, wash your hands. It's almost impossible to get rid of every single virus particle without extremely assiduous hand washing. That's why I believe the data that I've shown you about the risk of splattering and contamination are relevant. I'm sorry I can't be with you today uh, because of the setup in the room uh, where I'm not with you and um, I can't take verbal questions. Um, so if you do have questions you'd like to put to me, please can you email me um, with that email address. Thank you for listening.